Hello and welcome back. So in the previous video, we looked at how to set up our virtual environment and then install certain packages as well. So in this video, we would start looking at how to get well vested or well acquainted with the Python programming language and then see how well we can translate our scientific computing problems in a way that the computer can understand and then compute them faster for us. So now the main goal of learning a programming language is to write a set of instructions that we humans have. So either a problem, write it in a way that the computer can understand it and process it faster, right? So these programming languages are more or less like a language we can use to communicate with the computer. Bear in mind that the computer is just an electronic device, which means that it only understands zeros and ones. And then for that matter, we will need a programming language that would serve as an intermediary between we the humans writing the instruction and then the computer processing all the instruction. Always know that the computer is not that smart. You are always smarter than a computer. So we would have to give it exactly what it's supposed to do. And then it does the exact thing for us. So in order to do that, since Python is general, it's Python can be used to do a lot of work either web development or scientific computing or mobile app development or desktop app development and a whole lot of things. But it can be used for data analysis and a whole lot of things. We would want to tune our examples in this tutorial series just towards the computing, the scientific computing area. So most of our examples will be geared towards mathematical domain and then but then the concepts you are going to learn are generic. They can be used or applied to any specialization at all you are interested in. So let's try and grasp the concepts. And then whenever we want to do any other thing, we can just pick it up from there. So to start, we, we would want to talk about data types. So just like any language we have, the English language or any of your favorite mother language, we have certain keywords that we use to represent certain things so we have numbers we have sentences phrases alphabets and all those things that we have so the same way we have data types that we use to represent different types of data that we either receive or input into the computer for it to process or do the processing for us so these data types are to let me create a new file here so to create a new file you open your terminal if you already have it open you do control shift back tick to do your terminal or you click here and then while i'm here i do touch reminder make sure that your scientific environment here is activated or you can just do navigate to your python directory where you install the scientific environment and you do source so you do source and then dot forward slash dot since it's hidden scientific environment then you have binary and then activate then once you hit enter it should come back here for you okay i already have my activated so there's no need for that and i want to create a file touch and let me call it data type so this is the third video so data types data types dot pi so once i have this file is open i can just come here to the file explorer and i click on the data types and then i should have it open here in my text editing environment for me so basically we would want to talk about data types right so the data types in python are quite similar to the ones we have in the real world so the first data type we'll look at are strings, right? So the strings or characters and characters. Just like we have characters in the English language, which are mostly represented by alphabets, A, B, C, D, up to Z, every single letter in a programming language is regarded as a character. And to represent or to make the computer or the programming language interpret 
any alphabet you type as a character, you would have to insert or put that character inside a quotation, right? So either you use a single quote or a double quote to represent those characters. So you have a character. So I have hello world here. Hello world as a character, sorry, as a string. And then I have H here as a character. So basically it means that if you concatenate or you put different characters together, you get what is called a string. You string the characters together. And then if you just have the alphabet alone, then that becomes a character, right? So we have the strings or characters. So the characters are represented or they are just the English alphabet letters, right? Keep that in mind. And if you want to let the Python know that this is a character or a string, then you would have to do what? Put them inside a quotation. So if I do print type of, let's say H and I hit enter, let me comment these ones out. And then I run that, so I do Python and then data types. I'm told that this is a string, right? So basically, unlike different other programming languages, Python looks at all of them as a string. But keep in mind that in some other diff languages, just a single one is a character, multiple of them is a string, right? So you keep that in mind. A string is just multiple characters put together. The next data type we'll look at are the numbers. What we call in the English alphabet as num, the English language as numbers. You also have the integer data type. That's the integer is just positive and negative whole numbers, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, going uh integers. So and then for them, you don't have to put them in quotes. If you put numbers in quotes, they'll be regarded as a string, right? So if I come here and I say print quotes, let's say one, then it means that, sorry, if I say type, type of one, this tells me that what I have a string. But then if I do the same thing and I say print, and then this time I remove the quotes, let's see what happens. If I remove the quote and save it, it tells me that this is what? An integer. So you see, we have a string here and then we have an integer. Keep that in mind. So you can have hundred or thousand. And then when you print it, this becomes an integer. Okay. And then here we could have floats as well. So floats are more or less like the decimal version. So if you have anything point something, so if you have 2.3333, or negative 2.2.777 or whatever. These are regarded as floating points, right? Or floats in Python. So basically, if I print a type of 2.4, I would get a float this time around. So you see that this time around, I have floats instead of the integer or the string that I have. So basically, these are the data types. And then for some time, you've been seeing me use the print, print, print function. Basically, what this function does is just to output certain things to the screen for us. So if I do print and then anything I put inside it is shown on the screen for us to view. So if I do print hello world, hello world, and I save this, if I run this, I get a hello world here for me. If I do print, 2.3 whatever you give it just make sure that if it's a string you put them inside quotes either single quotes or double quotes but then if it is an integer or a numeric type data type then you can just leave it without a quote 
and then this will print the string or the number you want it to print for you so basically this is these are the data types that we have in the next video we would look deeper into the data types and then speak more about the variables and then use variables to hold certain data and do other more things if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends and can't wait to see you in the next one thank you